Session-based PvP games often have characteristics such as non-continuous game time, distinct start-stop time points, and high latency requirements. In light of this, what functionalities should a cloud-native architecture for session-based games be able to achieve? And how can OpenCruise Game facilitate the containerization of such games? Hello, and welcome to this episode of Cloud Forward. Today, let's explore the implementation of cloud-native transformation for PvP session-based games based on OKG. Session-based games refer to a type of game where the players are gathered in a specific game scenario within a limited time frame. In general, a session is equivalent to a match, and after the match ends, the game relationship between players also ends, and the session terminates as well. Therefore, in the industry, session-based games are commonly understood as room-based games, where a room hosts a corresponding game session. These games often feature non-continuous, with distinct start and stop time points, and are commonly found in MOBA FPS games with high latency requirements. The games involve at least two or more players interacting and battling with each other within a session, and during peak and off-peak times, there is a significant difference in the number of matches. Based on these characteristics, an ideal cloud-native architecture diagram for session-based games should have the following capabilities. 1. Provide direct network connectivity by assigning independent public network access addresses for each room, allowing players to connect directly. 2. Provide game matchmaking functionality to find suitable teammates and opponents for players to form a session match and allocate appropriate game rooms. Three. Provide elastic scaling capabilities to automatically request and release infrastructure resources based on peak and off-peak business demands to control costs. 4. Provide state management functionality to automate the management of the business state and life cycle of game rooms. 5. Efficient game delivery and operation management with a high degree of automation. So, how does OKG achieve the containerization of session-based games? In terms of direct network connectivity, session-based games require direct network connectivity, usually considering two issues, reducing game latency and enhanced player game experience and removing unnecessary gateways or proxies to save resources, costs, and simplify technical architecture. In the era of traditional game operation, game server business and infrastructure were tightly coupled. Often, when developing server-side programs, an additional port allocation manager was required to avoid port conflicts between different rooms on the same machine. After cloud-native transformation, game developers no longer need to worry about port allocation for game rooms. Room servers can be horizontally scaled, so each room server should have its own public network access address. However, the native service load balancing model in Kubernetes cannot meet this requirement. Therefore, OKG provides various networking models to automate the management of public network addresses, EIP plus port, for room servers. From then on, game developers do not need to worry about network configuration or the infrastructure, and game operators only need to provide simple parameters to efficiently deploy and automate the management of room server networks. In the OKG mode, each room server corresponds to a pod. For session-based games, the currently available networking models include Kubernetes host port, Alibaba Cloud NAT Gateway, Alibaba Cloud SLB, and Alibaba Cloud EIP. Each networking model has its own characteristics and is suitable for different scenarios. Once the game rooms have their own independent public network access addresses, the remaining question is how to provide this address to the player's client. Generally, session-based games have a matching service role, and the matching service commonly perceives the network address of room servers in two ways, active retrieval and room server self-registration and reporting. In terms of game matching, the process of game matching in session-based games can roughly be divided into players finding teammates and opponents to form a match, and finding a suitable room server for the match and returning the network access to the players. In the open source community, there are game matching frameworks like OpenMatch, where users only need to implement the matching logic according to the framework's standards. OKG provides the Cruise Game OpenMatch Director component based on OpenMatch, 
which mainly helps implement the second stage of the matching process mentioned above, finding a game server for the match and returning the address. This way, users only need to focus on the matching logic in forming a match stage. Next, let's look at the state management. As mentioned in the previous section on game matchmaking that the matchmaking service needs to retrieve the state of game server when assigning the server address to each player's client to ensure that the assigned server is available. So how should we define the availability of a game server? According to the design principles of OKG, an available game server should be equal to infrastructure runtime state ready plus infrastructure network ready plus business state ready. What does business state ready mean? This involves the definition of the server state based on the game's requirements. We recommend that the game server business state includes at least the following states. None, no abnormal or special state exists, indicating availability. And this is the default state after the server initialization. Allocated, already assigned, indicating that players are currently or about to play the game. Wait to be deleted about to be deleted, waiting for OKG to recycle the pod. The simplest state transition model is that the default state after the room server is pulled up is available. At this time, op state is none. When matching the requirements are generated, the matching server searches for the available, infrastructure ready and op state is none, room server, and after allocation sets its op state to allocated. Setting op state as wait to be deleted when game over by service quality. In this way, the corresponding pod will be automatically recycled and deleted by OKG. Of course, if you want to start and stop pods less frequently, you can also change op state to none after the game. The overall state transformation model is the default state after the room server is pulled up is available. At this time, op state is none. After assigning the room server, the matching system will set it to allocated. When the room server state is judged to be none for a long time through the coroutine, the op state will be set to through customized service quality wait to be deleted. After completing the room server state flow design, we will find that some states are determined by the room server business, and these states also need to be exposed to the Kubernetes level so that they can be linked to the automatic scaler, matching system, etc. Therefore, a mechanism is needed to mark the business status on the Kubernetes object, that is, game server. And this is the customized service quality function. Customized service quality automatically marks the room server state on the game server through the results of executing the direction script and the detection results corresponding state set by the user. We can see that there is a state detection script named wait to be deleted dot sh which detects whether the value of the GS state environment variable in the container is wait to be deleted. The corresponding game server set YAML should be as follows. Of course, there can be multiple custom service qualities. For example, when the room server needs to reveal its non-state, the script named non.sh is as follows. The corresponding game server set YAML should be as follows. So far, we have found that the room service business program only needs to set the corresponding GS state environment variable value at the appropriate time node. For example, when the room server has just been launched, set GS state equals none. When a player enters the room server, set GS state equals allocated. Although it does not need to be exposed to op state, you can still make state changes to avoid inconsistency between your own states and what is displayed in Kubernetes. When the room server game ends, set GS state equals none. When the room server is idle for a long time, set GS state equals wait to be deleted. In this way, we design three room server states, none, allocated, wait to be deleted. Next, we will perform corresponding elastic scaling configuration based on the above room server state. The ideal state for elastic scaling of conversational games is that during peak business periods, the number of room servers is sufficient to allow players to access the game in seconds. During low business periods, the number of room servers is reduced to save resource costs. OKG provides an automatic scaler that can sense the state of the room server and automatically adjust the replica value of game server set to achieve the ideal effect of scaling according to the game business status. As mentioned in the state management section that the game server whose op state is wait to be deleted will be automatically recycled by OKG. 
In this way, as long as the business decides that it will no longer provide services, it can set weight to be deleted through custom service quality. OKG's core strategy for providing automatic expansion is to ensure that there is an available and sufficient number of room servers. This number is equivalent to buffer and is determined by the user. In OKG, this parameter is called min available. When the current number of game servers with op state of none is less than the set min available value, OKG will automatically expand new game servers so that the number of game servers with op state of none set meets the same minimum number. Kubernetes Elastic Scaling covers two levels, application layer elasticity and resource layer elasticity. Among them, OKG provides the flexibility of the room server application layer and automatically adjusts the number of pods corresponding to the room server. Only adjusting the number of pods cannot save resources costs. The number of nodes need to be automatically adjusted. This is how Kubernetes Cluster Autoscaler achieves resource layer elasticity. The core principle of Cluster Autoscaler is 1. When a pod is in the pending state due to insufficient resources, the node is automatically ejected. 2. Automatically recycle nodes when node utilization is too low, nodes are idle. If you are keen to know more about Alibaba Cloud, Cloud Native Game Solution, click the link in the description below. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel for more videos of Cloud Forward in the future. Until next time.